Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. We're going to be painting a couple more miniatures now. Uh, we're going to be looking at more of the monsters that came from the Horrific Journeys expansion pack of Mansions of Madness. And what we have here are the Hunting Deep Ones. These guys are just big, bulky, scary fish monsters. And I decided that I wanted to try to do an effect that I haven't done for the channel yet, but I really, really, really like, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I've done it a couple of times. Somebody had me do it when he had me paint Magnus the Red, which is a really, really big premium Warhammer 40k miniature. Um, and it, what we're going to do is kind of like a faux iridescent color scheme. Now, you can get, like, actual iridescent iridescent paints, but I figured what we could do is, is we could just do something that uh, is just kind of home-brewed. And what that involves is using a bunch of metallics, basically. Uh, so the first thing that I did was I did a base coat of all white here, obviously. Now the next thing that I'm going to use, and I'm just going to use a, you know, bright standard silvery color. So we're going to be using a game color brand here. This is Chainmail Silver. So this is the first thing that we're going to do. All right, don't be afraid to get out a fair amount of paint, too, because we're just going to do a full coat over the entirety of these guys. So let's get going, and we'll go from there. And I'm not kidding when I say we're going to do a full coat. So the, the mouth there, all that good stuff, don't worry about it. If you want to avoid the mouth, you can, because we are going to do uh, something separate with the mouth, but I honestly don't think that it really matters at all whatsoever. If you want to, you can also do the thing where you just kind of get the tip of your brush into some water, and that will just water down your paint pretty substantially, as you can kind of see right there. And that'll just kind of help to thin it down and... Uh, make it run a little bit more evenly into the recesses, and my kitty cat just meowed at me. Toki Wartooth, are you doing okay, boo? Yeah, you can see how much thinner that is. Um, we're not going to worry too much about thinning the paint down very much, though, just because it takes a long time to dry. Well, it takes longer. I mean, a you know, long time is relative. Uh, but it takes longer to dry than if you were to just not thin it down at all. So, yeah, like I said, just go ahead and coat the entirety of these guys with chainmail silver. Yeah, like I said, I, I wanted to do the iridescent thing, and I realized, you know what? I, I've seen some... Oh, I don't, I don't remember what types of fish. I, I've seen some fish and, like, pigeons and that kind of thing that have, you know, just a little bit of a nice kind of collection of purple and, and blue and green. You know, like I said, just a regular iridescent color scheme on their scales and, and that kind of thing. And I thought that the big, hulky fish monsters would be a really, really cool way of doing that. And if you end up liking the effect, you know, a lot too, you can do it for your other fish monsters too. Because uh, now that I think of it, I don't think that I've done many of, if any of, the fish monsters for Mansions of Madness for the channel yet at all. I don't think that I have. I think I've done Investigators, and I think I've done a bunch of... Eldritch monsters and cultists and that kind of thing, but I don't know if I've actually done uh, any, you know, uh, deep ones or anything like that. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. All right. There we go. We've got a nice, bright, silver fish monster there. He almost just looks like an unpainted pewter miniature. Just, you know, at a first glance, he just kind of looks like a pewter miniature. All right, so we're going to leave him the way that he is, and we're going to move on to the next one. We're just going to do the exact same thing. All right, there we go. So now we've got two fully painted, just kind of silver looking uh, hunting deep ones there. So I'm going to rinse off my brush. All right, and then next up, what we're going to do is we're going to do weird stuff. All right. Now, it doesn't really matter what these brands are that you get. So what I did was I just got some metallic colors here. I got blue, purple, and green. Now, it's important to make sure that you get metallic versions of these colors. You can kind of see in the cap there and right there. Oh, that one was kind of coming out a little bit. And right here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to get like a little bit of a drop from each color. Oh. Oh, you know what? I need to shake these up. All right, see how that looks. Much better. That looks more like actual paint. Okay. All right, so now we've got some fancy colors there. 
Now all we're going to do is, if you want, you can take a dry brush or you can just take any, any sort of random no-name brush here. Let me just grab, yeah, I'll just grab one of these, you know, right here. It's just kind of a big kind of chiseled brush right here. All right, and then what you're going to do is you're basically just kind of, you're just going to randomly sort of go over different parts of the body, of the bodies, with this color. Or with all of these colors, rather. You know, you don't want to get, use too much of one color or too much of the other. You're just sort of going to, you know, randomly assign, like, this part's going to be green, this part's going to be blue. Um, don't... Do too much right off the bat if you're worried that you're using too much color. Uh, it's not a huge deal to just use a little bit and then go back and forth between the different colors. You can even just use the same brush and I think that you'll be in, in good shape. I don't think that you'll be uh, in, in too big of, a, uh, of an issue if you mix up your colors or whatever. So like, I'm not even going to rinse the brush off, I'm just going to go right into this blue right here. Okay. Yeah, it's almost, you're kind of doing a dry brush sort of thing, or like a, you know, like an overbrush or whatever, you know. Uh, and you're just kind of doing that over some of the other sort of greens, or like non-green spots that you've done. And again, it doesn't really matter what color that you use and what order or anything like that. Just kind of, you know, have fun with it and just kind of do whatever you want to do. Okay, so he's got a lot of blue and green there. Yeah, that's coming along pretty nice, I think. All right, so now we've got some blue and green over both of these. And now we're gonna take some purple, and then basically just over any any sort of like silvery spots that might still be showing, we're just gonna go over those with the purples. If you do kind of a lighter, almost dry brush sort of thing like what I'm doing right here, uh, it's going to be very easy to blend the colors too. So don't be afraid to just you know, do some overlapping or anything like that. You know, try not to, you know, muddy your colors up too much or anything like that, but, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to sort of blend the different colors together just a little bit. He's got a lot of purple on him. That's cool. Okay. That's pretty good. Might get a little bit more green on there if you well, no, eh, eh, maybe more blue. Maybe some more blue on him. You know, like I said, just kind of take it, you know, a little bit as you go. Again, don't be afraid to, to mix up some colors. Don't be afraid to do some crazy blending or anything like that. All right. That's one pretty much completely done. I like him. Okay. Oh, I already used blue. Let's just wipe off that. It'll be fine. Okay. Do some purple here. All right. There we go. So now we've got some cool iridescent. There we go. Yeah, see? Like blue, purple, and green go together really, really, really well. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to go for patterns. You don't need to go for, you know, anything crazy like that. But just, even if you just blend all those, I mean, look at that. That's beautiful. That's great. Oh man, I love that. Okay, cool. So I'm going to rinse that brush off. All right, now next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take just a smaller, eh, you know, again, you don't need to get like a super small brush or anything like that, but just kind of a random, you know, little brush here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out sort of a pinkish color and we're going to use that for their mouths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this pale violet red here. Uh, this is just kind of a, yeah, like a, like a dark pink color. That's all that this is. And I think that that will be fine. You don't need very much. I'll just get out a little drop like that. And then, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and just coat the, the tongue, specifically, and the sort of, like, roof of the mouth. Don't be afraid to cover up the, the, the teeth, too, because we're going to uh, use a color for them. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to do anything too fancy right there, so I think that that will work just fine. All right, I'm gonna rinse that. All right, next up, I'm just gonna take out some uh, pure black right here, just regular old black. And I figured that um, they're gonna have blackened sort of claws and teeth. So what we'll do is we'll take this black color here. Don't need very much at all. 
Uh, shucks, I think that we can just keep using that same brush that we were using if we sharpen it down to a point. Okay, and then we're just going to go over each little tooth individually and each claw individually. Now he's got some black teeth. He looks a little nasty. All right, now he's got some kind of claws on his feet here. All right, so now he's got some uh, black claws, some black teeth there. Okay, I'm gonna just do the same thing with the other one. All right, so now we've got some black teeth there on both of our hunting deep ones. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And next up, I want to brighten up those eyes a lot, and I kind of want them to have glowing reddish-orangish eyes. So I'm going to take out some Phoenix Red here. Barely need any at all. There we go. All right, and that brush was starting to get a little bit flayed on the end. There was that little, like, fuzz on the end that kept messing with me a little bit. So what we're, uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a Reaper paint uh, paintbrush here. This is, like, the, the good brand of paintbrush right here. So this is a Reaper 1 gauge. It's just a standard size brush. And we're just going to... Get the eyes with this Phoenix Red color. All right, there we go. So now he's got some nice glowy red eyes there. All right, great. All right, now we've got some nice glowing red eyes for both of those Deep One hybrids there. All right, next, you know, honestly, we're almost done. Like, legitimately, we're pretty much done. Uh, but the thing that we're going to do is that they are a little bit flat and they look a little bit sort of, you know, even though they've got that cool iridescent color, they almost look a little bit unpainted. We want some shade in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, Citadel shade here. This is Nuln Oil. If you can't, I mean, you don't need to use this exact brand. You can get anything, um, any, any sort of shade or wash, like uh, Game Color makes a really, really good series of washes here. If you can get one that's just a flat black one or anything like that, that would probably do just fine. I've got Citadel here just because it's one that I've had for a while a uh, while now. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out some big fat brush. Oh, let me find one. Here we go, this is just a big fat soft bristled brush here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this shade and we're just going to apply it evenly across the entirety of the miniatures. And that should fill in all of the sort of creases and crevices and, uh, and give some shade, give some depth to the mini. And more importantly, it should retain the really cool iridescent color scheme that we've already got on there. That's what we want. There we go. That's awesome. Look at that. Okay, so we're going to let him dry. We're going to move on to the next one. Oh, got a little bit on my finger there. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at the difference there. Look at the difference between the the depth of you know this one versus this one. Very very clear difference right there. Oh, that's great. Okay, yeah, I love it. All right, so let's do the same thing with this one right here. There we go. All right. That is beautiful. I love them. Okay. Now I'm going to let them completely dry. And you know what? Shucks. You know what? Okay. So the last thing that I was going to do, and you know what? You can do this if you want. I don't know how I feel about it. But anyway, um, I think that they've got enough, you know, shininess and reflectiveness to them there like that. Um, now maybe when the uh, when the wash dries, when the shade dries, some of the uh, the wetness might go away. And if that happens, just take some gloss varnish here and uh, put some gloss varnish on it. But you know what? As they are like that, I think that that's actually pretty gosh darn solid. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and call it right off the bat, just like that. I think that those are some some great looking uh, hunting deep ones right there. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it, so thank you everybody- this is a short one. Wow, I, I knocked these guys out in, like, half an hour, which, um, is- is quick. Wow. Uh, yeah, okay, so there you go, the whole iridescent paint scheme kind of thing. Uh, it's quick, it's effective, 
It's beautiful. I thoroughly recommend that you try it out. So thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'll, I intend to do more Mansions of Madness miniatures for the video, so stay tuned for that. I intend to do another playthrough with my wife, uh, Riley, of Mansions of Madness at some point, although we've both got very busy schedules, so we'll just see how, how that goes long term. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see more Mansion stuff, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you just want to see more board game and nerdy stuff in general, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, go ahead and throw it a like. Blah 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 all that good stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to take up any more of your time because I'm in a pretty good mood here. So thank you again, everybody, for watching, but we'll see you next time. Bye.